Praise God, the mercies of God, God's mercy. That's what we need to pray for. We need to pray for the mercies of God. We're living in a time where we need God's mercy extended towards us more than ever before. That's one of my favorite uh, songs that come all the way from, of course, you know, uh, Andre Crouch, the late Andre Crouch is, is the author and the one that wrote that song. So we're, we're blessed to, to hear it. And I believe that song is, was so prophetic in the day that it was written. Now is the time that the, that, that song became viable and is applicable for the time that we're living in right now. We need God's mercy. And together we need to pray. We need to pray for our government. We pray for our president. We pray for the administration. We pray for our country. And we pray for our world. I believe that the believers, according to scripture, we as the body of Christ, we are the salt of the earth and we are the one that God says preserve the earth until the return of Jesus Christ. So together as believers, as men and women of God, we need to pray and repent for our nation and even repent for our world. May God have mercy upon us. May the mercies of God be extended towards us. God bless you. Now, I want us to take a few minutes and let's get into the word. Amen. We were, we were teaching and talking about the power of God's word, the power of God's word. God, there's power in his word. Now, uh, one of the first passages that we went to that we looked at in our last teaching on the subject of, the, of God's word is that in, in Hebrews, we're told in the 11th chapter that all the worlds were framed by the word of God. We go back to the beginning, we go back to the book of Genesis and we discover that when God, when God said something, whatever he said happened. God said, let there be, and God said, and God said, and over and over in the, in the beginning, God spoke. And when God spoke, things happened. And still today, when God speaks, things does happen. But God is now expecting you and I as believers to say what he says, so we can change our environment, we can change our atmosphere, we can change our world. We know Jesus is coming back and he's coming back soon. We've heard this. See, our soon is not God's soon. So we know God is waiting for the church to arise and become the body of Christ. The Bible says that, the, that all of creation waits and groan for the manifestation of the sons of God. So we need to manifest in this hour, not run in fear, not run in doubt, but manifest as sons, as children of the Most High God. That's what creation is waiting for. Amen. Amen. So let's go into our scriptures. Let's go back to the, the book of Joshua. We started to talk about the fact that God spoke to Joshua. And in Joshua chapter 1, and we once again we read the, the eighth verse, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. And here's what it says. Joshua 1 and 8. Hallelujah. God is speaking to Joshua and he gave him specific instructions. In fact, this was God's key. God was giving Joshua the key to prosperity and the key to having good success. God is saying to Joshua, and Joshua is now, he's in charge of bringing the children of Israel out of bondage into the promise that God has promised them. Okay, so God is now God instructs him and he says, I'm going to give you the keys to prosper and the keys to have good success. And so in verse eight, we, we, we find that God is speaking. God says, uh, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate in it day and night so that you might observe to do all that is written there, therein. And then 
Joshua, you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Now, I know you've read this and we've, we've studied this before and I've read this so many times, but now I wanna show you the, the, the impact of what God was saying to Joshua that is very relevant for you and I today because it's the same word. See, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word never fails. Whatever he spoke five, 6,000 years ago still exists today. Jesus said it this way. He says, heaven and earth shall pass, but not one jot or tittle of my word shall pass away. So whatever God has established, his word is settled in heaven, and he's, God is expecting his church, who reveals the person of Jesus, to, to establish it here on the earth. So God watches over his word, and his word has power. Amen. So here God's saying to Joshua, listen, Joshua, you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. But here's the key to good success. Here's the key to prosperity. I'm not talking about prosperity as having a whole lot of money. I'm talking about prosperity of having, that's what God meant when he said prosperity, that you prosper in, in everything in life that you'll do well in. And that's why he calls it good success. Amen. Amen. But here's what he says. He says, don't let my word depart from your mouth. It begins with our mouth. Don't let my word depart from your mouth. He said that you, he said, Joshua, meditate in it day and night so that you might observe to do all that's written in it, all that's written in it, and then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is not saying I'll prosper you. He's, he's not saying, I'll give you good success. He said, you will make your way prosperous. Do you think it's still true today? I believe it's still true today because God is the same God. If it's good for Joshua, it's good for you and it's good for me. You will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Praise God. But here's, here's the key that he gave him is let that word stay in your mouth. That means uh, you, we need to speak. Keep speaking the word of God. Keep releasing God's word through our mouth. Keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. But here, here's, here's, here's another part of the key. That, that you shall meditate in it day and night. Meditate. Here's a word that we looked at in our last teaching. Meditate. Meditate has little to do with, with your mind or your heart. Meditation has everything to do with your mouth. I know that's a strange interpretation. It seems strange. But in our English culture, in our culture, when we think of meditation, we think of uh, getting our minds uh, blank, not thinking of anything, uh, going into a phase where your mind is empty, where you are uh, thinking on things that you would like to see yourself do, uh, creating a picture, an utopia, creating an, an oasis, uh, and you've seen, you've seen this before, and I've seen it, where people would sit and, and say they're meditating and they're shutting their minds down and keeping a blank mind. That is not what meditation is, not according to the Hebrew word. In the Hebrew, that word meditation, it means to ponder. It means to ponder by talking to yourself. Interesting, isn't it? Which means meditation is connected to your mouth. Hallelujah. That's the scriptural or the, the, the Hebrew meaning of that word meditation. To ponder, to ponder by talking to yourself. It also means to speak quietly in, and repeat softly to yourself meditation. That's what it means in the Hebrew. That's what it means in the Hebrew language. So what God is saying for you and I, if it's good for him, it's good for us today. <clears throat> Continue, ponder, ponder by talking to yourself. Day and night. Talking what? Speaking God's word. Because he said, this is where you meditate in my word. Day and night. 
Talk it to yourself. Speak to yourself. Speak to others is how we encourage each other. Speak to others. Speak to yourself. Speak to those that need to hear what God has to say. But the key to your success and my success, the key to our prosperity, God gave it to him. And so he, he's given it to us. And I promise you, if we continue to say what God says, you'll see your life grow spiritually and you'll experience the, the beauties of God's blessing. It'll come to you because God says, I watch over my word and I intend to perform it. And in one place, he said, put me in remembrance of it. Put me in remembrance of, of my word. Come, let's reason together. Tell me, remind me of what I say. And God intends to do what he says. Amen. So here it is again. Joshua, meditate in it day and night. Speak it to yourself. Ponder by talking to yourself. Quietly repeat in a soft tone. So then meditation, according to, to biblical terms, is not a mental exercise, but it's speaking. It's coming out of your mouth. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So here it is. I want us to take a few moments. Let's go over to the book of, of uh, let's go over to the Psalms. Let's go to Psalms and chapter one. Psalms and chapter one. Hallelujah. Here we see some other examples uh, that the Bible teaches us that speaking is so important. Uh, in fact, that's how your faith, that's how our faith is released, is when we, when we say what God says. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, by hearing and hearing the word of God. If faith comes by hearing, how do you release it? How do you release faith? It's through your words and your actions. The Bible said faith without works is dead. Sometimes you have to say, in fact, all of the times we have to say something to encourage ourselves to step in, to start doing. See, God says, he says, you will observe to do. The more you speak, the more you say God's word, it'll move you into doing God's word. And that's where our success and that's where prosperity. The Bible calls it good success. Good success and prosperity comes from. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. So here in uh, Psalms, Psalms in the first chapter one, chapter one of Psalms, he, verse one, blessed is the man. That word blessed means happy. It also means prosperous. Blessed, happy, prosperous is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, hallelujah, is in the law of God or the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditate day and night. Here's that word meditation again. Hmm. Amen. In his word, in God's word, he meditates day and night. Now, <clears throat> He says we're blessed if we don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That means we're prosperous. It means prosperous. We're prospering if we don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man who don't stand in the path of sinners, nor, seat, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 2. But his delight. Hallelujah. His delight is in the word of the Lord. The word delight means, it means something that gives you great pleasure. His delight, something that gives you great pleasure. It means something that gives you extreme satisfaction. I don't believe that we would experience God's best through prosperity and success until we have come to the place in our walk with God to where we have this extreme satisfaction when we read and study the Word of God. Amen. I don't believe we'll experience God's best and, His, and the fruitfulness that God's promised until we come to a place where we give great, where, where the Word of God becomes great pleasure to us. I believe 
every one of us should pursue that in life. Every one of the believers, every one of the Christians, every one of us should be pursuing that God's word becomes such a delight to us. This is David. David, David says, your word is a delight unto me. Your word, your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I delight myself in your word. Early will I seek you, O oh Lord. David had a delight. He had such a passion. He had such a great passion. He had such a, 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 a great, he found such great pleasure in the counsel of God, in the words of Almighty God. And here God is saying to us, the, he said, the man that's blessed is the man who has great, a great, 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 great pleasure, who takes great pleasure in God's word. But his delight is in the word of God. And in the word of God, he meditates day and night. Wow. Here's that word, meditate again. In God's word is which we repeat. We speak over and over and over again. Every opportunity we, you get is, is to say what God says. This leads us into success, good success. And it leads us into a prosperous life. Because God, Jesus said, I come that you'll have life and have it more abundantly. And that life is found in God's word. Amen. Amen. See, to meditate is not the same as memorizing. The instruction that God gave to us or is giving to us is not to memorize the scriptures, which is okay to memorize. But when you memorize the word of God, you have to depend on yourself to, to remember what you've studied and what you've memorized. But when you meditate in it, it becomes a part of you. In other words, the more you say it is the deeper it gets on the inside of you till it becomes a part of who you are, a part of you. So that when you need it, it comes to you automatically because now this word is a part of you. In other words, we need to get a hold of God's word until his word gets a hold of us till we become one with God concerning his word. Amen. So to meditate is different than trying to memorize. See, I, I, I was able to memorize scripture, which is great. But until I start meditating on it, start speaking it to myself, quietly, softly, muttering it, saying it out of my mouth, that's when the time it became a part of my life. So that when trouble comes, what comes out of me is what is a part of me. And that's the word of God. So I don't say what others say. I don't say what uh, the media is saying, what the world is saying. I won't say what the, unbelie un the unbelievers say. I would say what God says, because God's word is true. And truth always, always is superior to facts. It might be a fact that things are happening in your life that is unfavorable. But the truth is God says he watches over his own. And the truth is, God says, all good things will come to them who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. And nothing good would he would hold from them who walk uprightly. Nothing, no good thing he would withhold from you. So here we see that delighting in God's word, finding pleasure in it, and having such an extreme satisfaction when you search and you study God's word, it leads us into that place of success, good success and prosperity. But here's the, here, the part, of the part of all of this is that word once again. And in his law, in his word, he meditates day and night. Speak it, speak it, amen. He meditates day and night. That's how we prosper. That's how you do well. And that's how we grow in God. To grow in the Lord is to grow in his word and allow the spirit of God 
to help us. He'll help us in the life that we live. Jesus said he's the helper. He's a counselor. He's, he's, he's gives us wisdom. He gives us understanding. The spirit of almighty God. So I'm blessed just by reading this. I hope you are too. I hope you're listening and I hope you're receiving it. Because you have to do this in your own time. Your own private time. You don't wait for someone to tell you. You do it if you want to succeed. If you want to prosper in all that you do. Prosper in this life according to the will of God. That's God's will for every one of us. Now here it is again. We read again. He, and, and verse 3 says, That person that meditates in the word shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Wow. That brings forth its fruit in its season. That means there isn't, when your season come, you will be fruitful. Not, you won't fail to produce fruit. Hallelujah. And then he says, who leaves shall not wither. In other words, your leaves won't fade. Hmm. Your, your leaves won't fall, it won't fall off. <laughs> you, you look good all the time. And then he says, and whatsoever he does, whatsoever he does shall prosper. There's that word again, prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. I want you to notice once again, God didn't say I'll prosper you. He says, whatever you do, that means whatever you put your hands to, whatever labor, whatever assignment, whatever work assignment you have, he says, will prosper. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your prosperity and your good success comes through God's word and comes through our confession. So meditation has very little to do with our mind, but it has every, most, uh, mostly everything to do with our mouth. And that's the Hebrew uh, or the Hebrew definition of what meditation is. God wants us to meditate in his word and sustain it. Amen. You can't, we can't do it once in a while. You can't speak God's word once in a while and expect to be fruitful in it, expect to see the blessings of God. You have to continually do it. That's why he says day and night. That's a continual, a continual process of saying what God says, process of speaking God's word. And here's another thing that we talked about in Psalms, in, in, in Psalms 103, where it says, that God says, I'll give you the assistance of angels. Amen. The, the angels of the Lord, God calls them spirits. Psalms 103 and verse 20, he says that he calls them spirits. He said, they, the angels, are ministering spirits sent to minister for them that are heirs of salvation. This is in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, excuse me, I think it's Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. They are ministering spirits. He calls his angels spirits. And here in Psalms, which we've talked about, God says, these angels has been assigned to us to help us because we are heirs of salvation. It says that they excel in strength, giving heed to the voice of God's word. Hallelujah. Angels been assigned to us. They are ministering spirits assigned to us to help us in this life. These are assign, assignments God has given angels. Now, I want you to think about that for We have assistance, much more than any assistance we can find anywhere, straight from the throne room of God. And Jesus said, for everyone, he says, everyone has angels who stand before the face of the Father. He says, he said, these, these, speaking of you and I, the angels of the Lord, he says, you have an angel standing before the face of the Father. Why? Waiting for instructions to work on your behalf and to work on my behalf. Hallelujah. The scripture says that they excel in strength. That means they get strong. Who do his word. Heartening. Heartening. And that word heartening means heeding, giving attention to, giving interest to. The word of God, hearkening unto the word of God so they might perform it. That's their jobs. You have your job. I've got my job. 
And our job is to confess and say the word, speak the word of God, to meditate upon it. That's our job. And the angels that God has assigned to us, their job is to help us fulfill what we have spoken through our mouths concerning God's word. They heed it. They give attention to it. They give interest, is what that word means. Interest to the voice of his word. God has furnished the word and we must furnish the voice. They act upon God's word. So I suggest that we stop saying, giving our opinions. I stop speaking my opinion in my circumstance, in my situation. It's time to stop speaking your opinion in your circumstance, in your situation. It's time to start speaking what God says about your situation. Let's say what God says about my situation, about my circumstance, about my mountain, about my difficulties, about my challenges, about these obstacles that's in my way. I'll say what God says. Hmm. Because they heed the voice that speaks his word. And so I would continue to speak God's word so I can see results in my life. And I encourage you today. Speak God's word. Let's get back to the strength. Let's get back to the word of God, saying what God says. Because God says, I watch over my word to perform it. Amen. You might as well shout a good amen because this is good. This is good teaching. And this, this is what helps us get to the next level in our Christian walk, getting to the next level in our spiritual growth in God, is learning how to say what God says, learning how to meditate and speak the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, let's go somewhere else. Let's go over to uh, the next book, Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs in the fourth chapter, Proverbs chapter four. I hope you're learning something, and I hope you're getting something from this tonight. Amen. Once again, I want to welcome all of our viewers. Welcome the, the Oasis family, Oasis Church International, the family, and, and welcome everyone that's viewing from everywhere, all over the world, and particularly here in the United States. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs, Proverbs in chapter four. Here's another powerful passage that we can learn a lot from. God always confirm his word, you know. Uh, the Bible says everything is established. God's word by two or more witnesses, is, it's established. I just gave you two witnesses. I just gave you two witnesses. Joshua chapter one, verse eight. And here we just read in Psalms, the first Psalm, one, two, and three, all the way down to to the verses one, two, three, four, and five. Praise God. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter four. Amen. Now watch. <clears throat> the fourth chapter, verse 20. Well, I don't know about you, but I, I'm enjoying this. I, see, I need, to, I need to speak this to myself. When you learn the importance of hearing God's word, you, you, you speak it loud enough that you can hear it because that's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. When I speak loud enough what God says, I'm hearing it and I'm getting faith by it. You see, faith doesn't come by what you have heard. Faith comes by what you're hearing. Amen. So it means that you have to continue hearing it. And that's how faith, that's how it comes. That's not how it grows, but that's how it comes. And we need faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. Amen. All right. Look here. Proverbs chapter four. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And let's begin reading in verse 20. Proverbs 4 and verse 20. It says, my son, give attention to my words. Mm. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them, what them? My words and my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. That means you got to keep reading it. Keep them, the word, my sayings, in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. Hmm. And health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. And verse 24 says, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Notice how <laughs> what comes out of your mouth is connected to giving attention, is connected to the word of God. Well, we're going we're gonna to look at that in just a moment, but let's go back to verse 20. Give attention. 
That sounds like, that sounds, let it not depart. Give attention. Give attention to my word. Attend to my words. Hmm. So let's, 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 uh, let's think about that word for a moment. Let's think about the word attention. Hmm. I give attention to things that is important to me. I give attention to things that I consider as priorities in my life. How about you? That's, that's normal for, for us. That's normal for a person. We give attention to the things that's important to us in our lives. Hmm. I give attention to it. And I know you do too. The things that, you, that we have established as priorities in our lives is what we give most of our attention to. Hmm. It means we give it priority. It means that you give it first place. You consider it more than you consider anything else. You consider it as priority. And here he says, give attention to my word. In other words, give it priority. And incline your ears to my saying and don't let it depart from your eyes. Hearing it, seeing it, and giving attention and focus on it. Give attention to it. Hmm. Give it priority. Attend to my words and incline your ear. Hmm. That word incline means, it means to lean. Give attention, give priority to my words and lean. Huh. Incline your ears to my saying. Lean towards what God has to say or what God is saying. And God often speaks not only when you read it through the word, he often speaks through his servants. He speaks through his leaders. He speaks to others. You'll be amazed sometimes even your children, hmm, even your youngest, your youngest child, God can use to say something to you, to speak to you. When, you be, when, you, when we have a relationship with God, no matter who speaks, if they've been inspired by God, we can tell the difference because what they say, no matter what the age, no matter how young or how old, based on what they say will register in your heart and you will know that that sounds like God. That's the way God would say that. That sounds like God's giving me instructions and giving me direction. And it could be, it sometimes it comes from, from children, from your child. Hmm. Because the Bible said, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, God has ordained praise and God has ordained strength. And the word is meant to strengthen us. Now we just read in Proverbs where he said, the word is, it, it, is life unto them that find it and health to all your flesh. That's what it says. It says life and health. But here, here in the, in, in, we, we're still in the fourth chapter. He says, uh, you, you, lend your, you lean, lean your ears to his sayings and give attention to his word. And don't let it depart from your eyes. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Because it gives life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Wow. Wow. Means, all right, my healing comes from the word. The word says, by his stripes I'm healed. That he himself bore my sins upon a tree that we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness by whose stripes I am healed. Isaiah said the same thing in Isaiah 53. He also, in Isaiah, he says that, that, that the sins, Jesus not only paid for our sins, but he paid for our healing. My, paid for my healing. The word is life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. In other words, what is he saying? Keep lean to my word, to my sayings, Give attention, give my word priority in your life. Keep it in the midst of your heart. Because it brings life to them 
who find it and give health to all your flesh. In other words, the word health means medicine. The word is healing and medicine to our flesh. Can you believe that? I believe it. I'm a, I'm a living testimony of the healing power of God through his word. I'm a living testimony. God's healing power through his word. There was one man we found in the, in, uh, in the gospels. And he was, he was a centurion that came to Jesus and said, my servant, I have a servant that's, that's about to die. Would you come and lay your hands and heal? And one says, another one says, no, no, don't even come to my house. Just say in a word. Just say in a word and my servant would be healed. In other words, send your word. Because in your word, there's power. And he, and he described, he understood. He understood the authority that Jesus carried. He said, send your word and I know my servant will be well. Because I understand the authority that you walk in. Because I too have authority. I'm not only in authority, but I'm under authority. And I know every sickness, every disease, every oppression, every demonic activity is subject to the authority that you carry. I understand authority. You remember that man saying to Jesus, I understand authority. Because I'm in authority and I'm under authority. When I say to someone, go, they go. When I say to them to come, they come. So all you have to say to that spirit that is tormenting my servant to go, and that spirit has to go. And Jesus marveled at his faith and said, look, I haven't found faith like this in the church. I haven't found faith like this in all of Israel. The man, Jesus said, he had great faith. How did it happen? He sent his word, power, the power of God's word. Amen. It's the reason that your preacher, your pastor, your leader don't have to come lay hands on you necessarily to pray for you. All they need to do is believe what the word says and send the word. And God says, I sent my word and it heals and delivers. Now, this is powerful. This is so powerful. It just blesses me every time I think about it. Because here, here is it. He says, it brings health, healing and health and life to those who find it. You cannot find the word of God and, and have the word be appropriated in your life if you don't search long enough and deep enough through meditation. You will never find it. You'll repeat. We'll continue to repeat what others say, and we won't be convicted by what the word says to us. You see, only God gives revelation. And when the revelation of who you are and the power that's in his word rests upon you and abide in you because you've been meditating upon it, you get so full of it that when you speak it, it's authority. Things happen when we speak God's word. When you declare what God says, when you speak the word, things will automatically happen because there's power, not in what you say, not in you, but in the words that you speak. So God says, I will confirm my word. God didn't promise to confirm you or I. He said, I'll confirm my word. So let his word come out of our mouth and God confirms that word that you speak, which is his word. Amen. Somebody shout amen because that's the truth. That's the word of God. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Now here, the word is life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Now, I, I just need to back up for a moment because I, I need to take a second look, need us to take a second look at this, this the emphasis that, that God is saying here in verse 20 and 21 once again. Give attention, give it priority, incline your ears to my sayings. Hmm. Do not let it depart from your eyes and keep it in the midst of your heart. Amen. Now, see, this goes back, this goes back to, to meditation. It goes back to the fact that when, when we repeat and, and keep saying God's word, it literally stays in our heart. And the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the more you meditate, the more we keep it in our eyes, 
and we lean towards God's saying, not the world's, not the media, not your friend, but what God says, when we lean towards his sayings, and when we make his word priority in our lives, when we repeat it and, and ponder it by talking to ourselves in it, which is meditation, hmm, he said, that's how you find it. That's how you find it. And it brings life to you. Hallelujah. Life to those that find it. And health to all your flesh. Medicine to our bodies. Wow. I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm excited about this because this is what we need to practice so we can live a victorious life outside. We're in the world, but we're not of it. Things can happen in the world, but it doesn't have to happen to us. We're in it, but we're not of it. God has a way of preserving his own. He'll keep us in the midst of storms. He can keep us in the midst of disaster. In fact, that's what he said. I'll, I'll keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon me because they trust in me. He's, he's able to keep us in the midst of troubled times. I don't know about you, but I'm being kept right now with all of the news, all of the things that are being said about the, uh, the coronavirus and all of the things people are dying, people are afraid, uh, people are scared to leave their homes. Uh, when I say people, I'm talking about believers, some believers, Christians, afraid. Afraid to leave, afraid, afraid to even talk about it. And when it's spoken, it's spoken in fear. God promised us that even if you've been attacked by this virus, God says, my word is health. If we do what he says, lean to it, lean to his sayings, not to the television, not to the, the news media. Not to those who speak their opinions. Not even to the professionals. The qualified professionals that speaks concerning this pandemic. But we lean to the truth. And his truth says it will bring life to you. And it will be medicine to your flesh. It means that if you've been attacked by this pandemic, that you won't need a vaccine. What you and I need is the word of God, is either this word is true, either God spoke the truth or he lied to us. It's time for the church, you and I, as the people of God, as the children of God, to stand and say, is this what we believe? Since we've been talking about this for years, we've been preaching and talking and confessing. We have been testifying of the goodness of God and the power of his word. What happens now, now that we have an opportunity to prove the word of God is true? Why are we running and hiding? I was watching uh, just the other day, one of, one of the famous, uh, here's, here's a, a celebrity who is really a comedian. I, I better not say his name, but I happened to be going through uh, a Facebook and I saw this uh, comedian, very popular, very popular name. And of course he has a, a, um, a national syndicate program on the radio and he's a comedian. Everybody would know who it is if I mentioned his name. And he was, um, he was sitting there uh, addressing uh, the world, I guess, through Facebook and talking about the pandemic. And, and he's a Christian from all I know, and what I've gathered, even in times past, he, he confessed to be a Christian, a believer. And, and he is, he's talking to the, to the world. He's talking to the nation and saying, you got to be, got to stay at home. You can't leave your house. We've got to keep social distancing. Uh, he says, uh, make sure you wear your mask and your gloves and make sure you don't, you don't do anything that they tell you not to do. 
And so stay home, don't leave the house. He continued to emphasize to, to everyone. And he says this, he said, I'm in my house and I, I have my, my son with me. I, I don't know, I think his son was 12 years old, 13 years or something like that. And he says, my son and I is practicing social distancing even in the house. He is on one side of the house and I'm on the other side of the house and we never come together. There's no touching, no hugging. When I'm in the kitchen, he's somewhere else. And so we don't ever cross paths within the house. How ridiculous. I could not believe what I was hearing. Here's a man who confess or profess to be a believer, a child of God, but yet spewing fear to all. Imagine those who has that level of influence and that level of visibility and everybody's watching and listening. That's nothing, the words is nothing but fear and doubt and unbelief in the hearts of God's people, if you receive it. And I said, I was dumbfounded. I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, why would you, if you feel that way, keep it to yourself, need not to talk like that so other people can be influenced by your negativity and influenced by your doubt and unbelief. Somebody says, why are you talking about? It? Well, I'm talking about it because we're believers. And the Bible gives us promises. And if this is true, why can't we prove it? Why can't we stand on it and say, Lord, you said that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. You said that when we find your word, when we do what you say for us to do, your word brings healing to our bodies. I don't need, I don't need an injection. Now, see, now some of you would, would criticize what I'm saying to you, but that's, that's where you are. And that's okay. I respect the fact that you're not there to believe what I'm saying to you or believe God for your healing. That's okay. But know that you can rise to that place where you can say whether this is true, if it's not true. Why are we, why are we living this life? If this is not true, then we are all living a lie. If what God says to us that he will do for us, and it doesn't happen, we have just lived a lie. We've been living a lie in these last years. And I refuse to live like that. I refuse to live with a compromise. I would rather die for a conviction than live with a compromise. And if this is true, then if I'm attacked by this virus, I expect to be healed because the word of God says, he says it right here and many other places in scripture, that it's health. In other words, I don't need a vaccine. What I need is the word of God. Hallelujah. So here's, here's, here's where I stand. I've been tested. I've been tested. And my test comes up positive. I've been tested positive for Jesus Christ not positive for Corona. I've been tested positive for Jesus Christ. And I would say what he says, and I expect to be healed if I've ever been attacked. And I want you not to, please don't misunderstand me. We don't deliberately test God by going into areas deliberately to be touched by this virus and this disease. We do what we know we should do, washing our hands, sanitize, be very, uh, walk circumspectly. We don't test God, but we don't walk in fear either and doubt and unbelief. And I'm, I'm in trying to encourage you and challenge you. You do what God says and we follow the ways of the Lord and the scripture then we have the right to expect God to do what he says. Amen. Amen. Incline your ears. Give attention to my word. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, don't let it depart from your eyes. 
It's life to those that find it. That's how you find God's word. That means that's how you get a hold of it. It finds you, you find it, and it finds you. Life unto them that find it, and health to all their flesh. Now let me help you once again. This sounds, it sounds equivalent to meditating in the Word of God. Speaking it, seeing it, hearing it, hiding it, keeping it in our hearts. So that when things happen, that's what comes from you. Let me give you an example. Here's, here's a good example. I, I, you, you would remember that when we were in kindergarten, you probably don't remember, that's going back a long time ago, but in kindergarten, we were taught uh, the alphabets, A to Z. We were taught how to repeat numbers. We learn our numbers. We learn our alphabet. You, have you noticed, uh, even when we teach our, our young people, our kindergartners, they have to, you have to make them repeat it over and over and over again. You and I did that. I don't know how old you are, but you did that when you were in kindergarten. We did it through songs, through rhythms, uh, whether it's the alphabet, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and whether it's the numbers that we've learned uh, to count from one to a hundred, but it was something that we repeated over and over and over and over again. And today, when was the last time you repeated it? You haven't said your alphabets from A to Z. You don't need to. You know why? Because now it's a part of you. You've said it so long and so often. We've been trained to repeat over and over, say it so often. Today, we still use it and never have to think about it. It is automatic. We know two and two equals four because we've said it so often. It now became a part of us. We not only memorize it, we literally meditate it because our, my teacher, <laughs> I remember, I'm talking back five, uh, I was five years old. When, when I was taught these things, and of course, you know, you probably can remember yourself, and they, they make you repeat it over and over and over again. And they created rhythms and songs to help you remember those things. Today, we don't, we don't, you don't even try to remember it. It's just automatic, comes out of us. You just know, you know, because it's been a part of you. Well, the same is true with the Word of God. And that's why he says you, you lean towards what God is saying and climb your ears to it, lean. Uh, give your attention, give God's word priority. Not the reports that we hear from man. That doesn't mean we don't listen to it. We listen, we hear what they're saying. But if it does, if it's not the truth, I choose the truth over the facts. Because truth always outweigh the facts. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone said the truth is, yep, yeah, you do have uh, you've tested positive. The truth is you do have a temperature. Uh, but, uh, excuse me, the facts is that we, we've tested you and you do have a temperature. And then if you're a child of God, let's see what the truth says. I, I don't deny. You can't deny it. That's the fact. It's a fact that you have a temperature. But when I look at the word and the word says, by his stripes I'm healed that he took my sickness and my disease and he carried them, he bore them. He bore them for me and by his stripes I am healed. And when he says in Exodus 15 and 26, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He says in Exodus 23 and 25, he said, I'll take sickness from your midst and I'll fulfill the number of your days. On and on, God has promised us healing and health and restoration. But he says, you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. It's not up to God. It's up to us to say what he says and put him in remembrance of his word. And God will honor his word. And that's what I trust. And every one of us need to get there. If we're going to be a testimony to the world, we're going to be a light to the world, we have to experience God first. 
we have to be able to reach God before we're able to reach the world. So God has to be paramount, his word, paramount in our lives. That's going to be the greatest testimony to the world. So let's believe what God says. Let's act upon it. And let's trust that he will do what he says, because he will. He will. If he promised it, he'll do it. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. Amen. And amen. And amen. Praise God forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, I close with this. <clears throat> I'm just to remind you, just to go back over a few things. Let's go back and do what he says. Let's go ahead and spend time in God's word. Put, put the uh, Facebook down. Put down the, the phone for a while. Uh, deny social media for a while. You'll be amazed of how you start thinking when we start to dismiss these things for a while. Make them secondary. Hmm. You'll be amazed how your thoughts will change and how your belief system will change. Because these things are the things that influence us the most because we're hearing it all the time, every day. All day long, every day, these voices are speaking to us, telling us what's wrong, how many people died, how many people will die, how many people are sick, and very few have recovered, and how many is expected to die in the next week, two weeks, month. Amen. And when the virus do go away, it'll come back with vengeance. Some have said that. It'll come back with vengeance. It, it won't be the end. It's going to... We have flattened the curve right now and it's going to climb again. And all, that's all we keep hearing. Do you? See, if you keep hearing it and you give yourself to it, you give your eyes to it, your ears to it, your thoughts to it, that's what you become. And that's what you'll start saying. It will eventually get into our hearts. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you right now. Watch what happens. Do it for a week. Just put those things aside. Leave uh, social media for a while. Don't respond to Facebook. Don't do the things that you've been doing. It'll change your confession. It'll change your words after a while because you're not hearing it like you were. And take that time and put that time in God's word by reading, studying. Make sure your eyes keep it in the midst of thine heart. Let it not depart from thine eyes. Lean towards it. Give priority to it. And watch what happens. Just give it just a few days. And watch what happens to your life and your confession. Everything begins to change. Because there's power in the word of God. The words of the enemy brings fear, but the word of God brings faith. And then that faith, you start learning how to trust him, even in dire situations, difficult times. We'll trust him. We'll ignore the symptoms and believe the word, the truth. Amen. Never, we can't deny certain things, but I tell you what, I choose to believe God's word. And that's God's report. And I'll believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? Trust is going to be the report of the Lord. God's good to us. God's mercies. May God's mercy be extended towards us. May God have mercy upon us as a nation. Mercy on his church. That we walk in faith. Trust. You'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. So learn how to trust God. Let's pick up his word again. Put the newspaper down. Put the magazine down. Put Facebook away, social media away. Just take time with the word of God and watch what happens. Things change. Right before our eyes, things will begin to change. And I, as somebody better shout amen because that's the truth. I'm a living witness of it. 
So let's practice it this week. Until next time, we come back next Wednesday at 7.30, and I'm going to hear good reports. I want to hear the good reports because you're going to have a good report. You can't, you can't spend time in God's Word and not have a good report. Amen. So until then, God bless you. And I call you blessed in Jesus' name. I speak over your life and I say, may God prosper you. May God bless you and keep you. And may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you. May the mercies of God is multiplied. Grace, peace, and mercy multiplied towards you and your house. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next time. Amen.